Hey, we're at Ohio State University today. Got a whole bunch of students here. They're going to be checking out Johnny X and how Johnny X compares to our stock 1025R. This is a hydraulics class. I'm wanting to see if they can really put Johnny X to the test. Let's get started. The students are starting with just a general walk around of the tractor, just trying to figure out what is stock, what's add-on, just differences, just to become familiar with uh, the tractor itself. Most of them have not been around 1025R, so it's not going to be obvious to them what what's changed, what's not changed, until they look pretty closely. And one of the challenges is that both tractors have some upgrades on them, right? So it's not that one is stock and one is not, it's just that the critical points on one uh, are stock versus upgraded. What are these FJ Dynamic boxes? That is part of an auto steer system. Oh, okay. So the steering wheel's been replaced with an auto steer. Um, I, I don't have the monitor because I have no place to put it. I put a canopy on top and then I can hang the monitor from the oh, canopy. Wow. So I used it to mow my yard with auto steer. <laughs> One other thing that is not stock. Yep, Kate picked it out. So that's a temperature gauge for the hydraulic oil. And I have that on both of them. It's going to help with this testing. It's right down here, by the way. The temperature probe is right there. You can see the, the brass there. I wonder what that was. So I want to talk a bit about what's going on in here and why it's made convoluted like this. One pump controls the implement and the steering. So they use this 50-50 uh, flow divider to divide between steering. Turns out we don't need three and a half gallons per minute. We're actually putting too much to the steering. We're wasting a little bit there. But this company, Hydros Plus, has come out with this better pump, right? You can see that it's longer. And they also added a flow divider, and you can actually see that just inside the left rear wheel on this tractor here, a priority flow divider. So it's got a screw on the outside. You can set the priority. We adjust this so that just enough to, that it steers nicely, and the rest of it goes to the implement. You also saw the hydraulic kit on the back. That comes from summit-hydraulics.com. Uh, so in ours, the, it's going to be running through the SCV. Uh, it's still going to be a true power beyond, uh, even though you're running uh, through the SCV, you're still using just straight off the pump. Uh, but we're really interested to see if there's going to be a pressure drop uh, running through the SCV versus you guys coming just straight out. So you guys bypass the SCV over there versus we're going to go through the SCV, but none of these are going to be in play. What, what dictates max flow and open center? All right, so what do we want to do? Give it to me. Give it to me. All right. <laughs> now look at the back pressure number. So it's creating back pressure even at that low flow. So we tested it first. We got eight gallons a minute flow, and we got um, 400 PSI going straight through the power beyond, straight from the pump. And then the second time we hooked it up after we ran it through the SCB, flow stayed the same, but pressure went up to 1300 PSI. Why? Restrictions. Restrictions, what type of restrictions? Going through the <clears throat> valve block. Going through the valve block. We added how many PSI? 900? Um, yeah, 900. Where is there 900 PSI of restriction? Well, there's gonna be some restriction in the elbow, is there? The elbow, okay. Line size. Is there a restriction? L line size. Right? All right, so this is a good point. When you go to start replacing hydraulic hoses, what are we supposed to check? Size line. Line, yeah, we're supposed to look at our flow rate. So our physical flow rate and our velocity. All right, so gallons per minute as well as our feet per second. All right, and what we would notice if we got a nomenclature graph out, what would we find out? We need bigger lines. Need a bigger line. So what size lines it have? Three eighths. What would we do? Go up to what? Half, half inch. Notice we don't see that over there because the flow is so much lower. And that's what this kit was made for, was the standard flow, right? So they didn't consider this increased flow. So when I get home, I need to make half inch lines. Other one, stock? It is four gallons per minute at 200 PSI when not run through the SCVs. Okay. With the SUVs, 100. Tim, I already like you. Our name's Tim. Exactly. How great is that? Exactly. So I have, I'm assuming you're a senior. 
I'm a junior actually. What are you going to be doing when you get done here? Yeah, so I'm excited. So I come from a farming background as well. So our family does uh, corn and soybeans, uh, but we also have an agri entertainment business where we do pumpkins and sunflowers. Oh, okay. And being in the greater central Ohio area, we get to talk to people about agriculture and how it affects them. And uh, in Ohio, where Columbus is located, it's Franklin County. So we are the only agri entertainment business in Franklin County. So we're only 25 minutes away from Ohio State campus where we are today. This major, I mean, you can touch in any any area you want to, whether it's agronomy, whether it's animal science, whether, whatever specification you want to go into with this major, it's open uh, and you can go into it with the major. Uh, and then also there's so many opportunities outside of your classes. Um, and we have a common quote, it's don't let the classes get in your way of education. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities. I'm actually the president of the ASM club, so the Agricultural Systems Management Club. And we take quite a few opportunities to go and take trips. Uh, all around the country and to really get to dive deep into the agricultural industry and get to talk to those professionals. Yeah, I like that quote. Don't let classes get in the way of your education. Oh, that's yeah. oh, that's yeah. really good stuff. What have you learned so far, Owen, about the testing? We're getting a lot more flow out of the Johnny X as well as some higher pressures than what we're getting out of the stock tractor. So, What's your career intentions? Uh, so I've actually uh, accepted a job as a district sales manager for a uh, seed company called BA Genetics. Sorry, you're seeing everybody's backsides, but you know what? That's because they're focused on what they're doing. It's not their job to be celebrities. How would you draw an open center? I'll draw an open center system. You've got a reservoir. I don't even know how to say reservoir. You've got a pump. Then you've got your implement. And then you've got a return. But that's not a complete system. What, what else has to be in the system? What type of valve? Ah. There you go. So Pressure right relief. after this pump, we have relief. So it's just whatever that's set at that determines your pressure. So does engine RPM matter? No. Oh. Engine RPM does not matter, right? So should be completely negligible. Okay, let's run the test. Is my schematic right? Yeah, I would have drawn, drawn it in symbols. They probably would have picked it up. See, okay. I don't know the symbols. I'm not an academic oh, guy. Oh, see? I'm going to erase this. Yeah, because that's, that's farm boy talk. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, you can there, draw There's the no return. Well, valves did the return. This is your relief. But th if you drew your valves. Oh, this means return? Yeah, that's return. Tank is, those are tank. Okay. The, an open center valve, so like those valves on there, they would be just stacked in series. Sure. But those go to tank. Your power beyond does the same thing. It's just making a big loop and going back in. That's a lot more high tech than my picture. She didn't get to see your pic my picture, it was already erased. Mine showed it though. You, you were, they understood. They understood. They did understand. Oh, yeah, didn't they, they got it. <laughs> well, they speak farm speak. It's my job to make them speak academic speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Brendan. What year are you in college? I'm a senior this year. A senior? Almost yeah. done. Yeah, I'm graduating here in a month. Okay. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going back to the home farm. Okay. I live on a, uh, it's a small grain operation. So I'm going to go home and help out with that. Is that here in Ohio? Yeah, it is. It's up by Worcester. A lot of what I learned in college isn't actually in these buildings. A lot of it's outside. You know, how to deal with other people that you differ from, especially coming from a rural community and now living in Columbus. Another thing is networking. I've learned, um, yet again, people, learning a lot of different people um, within these buildings, having them as a resource after college, but then also um, outside my friends, having them as a resource after college too is huge. So there's your max pressure. 2,000, right? All right, give her full throttle. Full throttle. So about 100. So we ran it through the SCV, not the power beyond, when we did it, because we thought it'd be the same. Okay, uh -huh. so so look at that number, 2,100. Then idle it back down, and let's do it and look again. So 100 PSI. They were running through the valve. We ran through the valve. They ran through fair the valve. Enough. Fair, fair enough. enough. Don't worry about them, don't worry about that. Think about it. Why? We just proved in a picture over here it's irrelevant. So discuss that amongst yourselves and come yeah, up with an answer. Because, uh, so just barely any difference? No, I wouldn't say it's barely. It's the difference between picking up that log and not picking up that log. We saw 2100 at max throttle, 2000 at idle. The question is why? We just proved on the board over there that it no, should be no difference. So discuss among yourselves and see if you can figure out why. 
We've shown on this channel repeatedly that the max PSI that you can get out of the system changes between low idle and high idle, okay? And in theory, that should not be the case, right? The relief valve is consistent um, and it should not allow any higher pressure at high throttle than low throttle, but it does. And you can experience that on your own. If you're trying to pick up something, you're having a little bit of a challenge, go to high throttle and you'll be able to pick up a little bit more or pick it up a little bit higher. These guys are scratching their heads trying to figure out why that is. So Brendan, what do you think is the reason? Uh, my reasoning would be that the, the relief valve is only able to let so much oil by. So once it fulfills that amount of oil that it's able to let by, that'll start building pressure because it can't let it in any more oil back to tank. I think you're right. And I think we've even got more proof of that. On the regular Johnny system, we saw about a 100 PSI increase. But on Johnny X, we saw a 400 PSI increase. And I think that adds more. So the relief valve isn't big enough for the, the new pump. For the new pump, yeah. So how would you change the relief valve pressure? Different spring. Different spring. So should we ask Tim how he, because they're both, st as far as I know, did you change the relief valves? Uh, I, I uh, on the advice of my attorney. <laughs> <laughs> off, off the record. Off the record. <laughs> yes, I've changed the relief valve on that one. Um, and if you want to know how to do it, watch a video called What Tractor Time with Tim Doesn't Want You to Know. It's the funniest video you can imagine. But anyway, um, it's a spring and it's a set screw. You know, and then you have a, a, a tighten to make sure that it doesn't uh, move on you. On Kubota's, it's not. On Kubota's, it's, um, it, again, you want to tighten that spring, right? Make it tighter, but they add uh, shims. The little Kubota's, you, you buy washers, shims to, to tighten the spring. I'm happy to see how engaged everyone is. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this group of, of, of guys, and of course, the one lady. And th they're engaged. I mean, there's only two machines here, so it's not like there's a, a lot of uh, things to be doing. A lot of people just have to be watching. But if you'll notice, we're only seeing their backsides. That's because their eyes are all down there focused on what's going on, what's being plugged in, why it's being plugged in there. They're asking questions. Uh, this is this is what it's all about. I'm I'm pretty impressed with what's with what's being done here. So we're trying to test parasitic pressure. Okay, now let's let's go full throttle. We're seeing 400 psi. So now you're seeing about 1,300 psi of back pressure, and that's what the the document's calling parasitic pressure. I mean, it, it doesn't do us any good. In fact, it's just taking power away from the tractor. All right, for the million dollar question, how much horsepower out of each one? You can calculate the amount of horsepower uh, that the hydraulics are putting out by taking the max flow times the max pressure and divide that by 1714. It's just a magic number, and that gives you the horsepower. I think you could translate that into what power of a, of a hydraulic attachment, you know, hydraulic motor you could run. This guy's not going to run much of a hydraulic motor. Question is, one of their later questions is, will this one run a hydraulic motor? So in theory, if we went and tested temperature, how would we go, go about that again? Uh, putting under load. Put under load. So for a long period of time, we'd set a back pressure and if we got over a certain temperature. So let's do it. See if we can get it above 180 degrees. So do a, do a set pressure of 1500. So we're testing a continuous load. This would be like running an, uh, a hydraulic motor. 1500 PSI. And this is the rating, by the way, on a post hole digger that we're going to look at here in the next question. 1500 PSI, they need at least five gallons per minute. We're seeing what the temperature does. I'm really thankful to have the temperature gauges already built in. This is an add-on that my friend Matt Lewis helped me do. It's very important for today's test. I'm disappointed we're not seeing that temperature gauge buzz. Is it broken? The engine temperature gauge on Johnny X is not showing anything. It looks like it's not even hooked up. Uh, I don't know. The other tractor is showing a little bit of temperature. You know how it is, they rarely show much. So we've been running these several minutes now, 1500 BSI, full throttle, 
Um, of course, one has a lot less flow than the other. Neither of them are connected to the summit kit. So this is just through the power beyond. The temperatures are increasing at exactly the same rate. The temperatures are identical. Right now, they're at about 195 on each system. But it's fascinating to me that they're increasing at the same rate. One would think that the, the, the triple size pump, the uh, uh, 12 gallon per minute pump would make a big difference. Uh, but it seems like we're, we're seeing about the same. Of course, the weather here today is perfect. We've got the door open. It's probably 68 to 70 degrees. Fascinating. They lost flow. They both lost flow as they went up as the temperature got up. Oh, did they did they kind of track that? Yeah. Good. They lost about a half gallon. How much did you lose? A gallon. A gallon. Which would make sense. Your oil properties are changing at the high temperature. What temperature did you notice you lose flow? I mean, it just kind of gradual. Is it? Yeah, was it like 190? Yeah, or? probably around 190 we lost that. Which would make sense. 180 is nominal offer. And one of my viewers has, has, has noticed that. He's actually made it. It's, he says it's noticeable that he has less hydrostatic power yeah. when he gets his. He's got a temperature gauge just like this. Above 190, he has less hydrostatic power. Yeah, that makes sense. So we're seeing a decrease in power at about 190 degrees. In their case, they're seeing a decrease of hydraulic flow because they've had a continuous flow monitor. They're seeing that flow decline, so the, the oil is not functioning as well once it gets past 190 degrees. We ran them up to somewhere around 200, maybe 210. Uh, both of them behaving exactly the same as far as uh, how long it took to get there. I find that fascinating. Ellie, how do you deal with all these guys? I'm asking myself the same thing every day. Um, Honestly, they're great. Um, if I don't understand something, I feel comfortable enough to ask them a question. I will say I definitely am a slower learner than most of them. Oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> but no, it's great. You definitely have to have a backbone working and being in this major and being involved with everything. Yeah. Now, what are you planning to do when you get out of school? <laughs> um, so right now, I am thinking about coming back and getting my master's. Oh, really? And I really want to work with an extension and doing outreach programs for 4-H and FFA kids about the importance of like the STEM and technology that's entering the agricultural industry. Okay, so were you involved in FFA? Yes, I was, 4-H. Yes, <laughs> involved in both. <laughs> well, I wish you well in your future. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so the question they're dealing with now is whether it will run a post hole digger. They've got a Land Pride HD25. They're looking at the specs now. Stock one would not run it because it does not it meet, it meet four the four gallons. Yeah, it meets five to 12. The Johnny X does. What about the HD35? Nope. Why yeah. not? What's the flow requirements? 10 gallons. So here it is, the next generation of agriculture. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I, I, have you guys had any fun with this today? Is it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it better than a typical lab that yeah. Klopp puts oh, on yeah. for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought so, I thought so. I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So when I get home, I think I need to make up some half-inch hoses yep. for this particular SCV kit and see if that helps. I, I, I don't have the inline pressure gauge here. I have the flow gauge, but I don't have inline pressure. I'm gonna have to come up with a way to test that. Maybe yeah. you'll have to come out to my place. And yeah, test we can get it. Tim squared up there. Yeah, there <laughs> we go. Well, yep. congratulations. Thank Thanks you, very much. Appreciate it.